So here's part two. So I left off talking about how I, I, I felt like I was on the outside looking in. I felt like I was in a different world. I, I felt like everyone around me was strangers. I felt exposed. I felt like a berry that was placed out in the elements where anything could happen to it. And I didn't have a relationship with Christ yet, but it's part of my testimony that the Lord, um, it was a transition. It was, I was of the world. I was dead in Christ, meaning that I didn't know any truth. Jesus Christ is truth. And I was living in a world of lies. And so when I was coming into the truth on how evil this world truly is, because lies are evil. And when you know, when you come to know that every single thing is a lie, your whole world is upside down. And it also didn't help that I knew that no one around me understood what I was going through or could possibly un comprehend where I was coming from. Because, again, the whole world is sleeping. The whole world is being deceived. And they're under a strong delusion. I didn't know those scriptures yet, but I knew that no one else knew the truth. And no matter how much I would try to explain to people what I was going through, you'd get that look on their glazed look over their face. Like, I don't really know what you're talking about. Um, they look at you like you have two heads. Or it's almost as if they don't hear what you're saying at all. Like it's reaching their ears, but it's not reaching inside their thoughts. Like you're talking to them and they're nodding like they're listening to you, but they don't hear anything that you're saying. So I felt like this lonely berry that I, I'm using in this video that um, the reason why the whole, the importance of what I'm telling you and why uh, I'm, I'm explaining to you my testimony and the transition of when the Lord plucked me out and I felt like this berry, it's very important because I was meant to feel that way. Because the Lord wanted me to come to Him and Him only for truth. To come to Him and Him only for comfort. Because I learned that I could have there was, there was no faith in this world anymore, and I could not lean on not a single person around me, no matter how close or whatever that I, whatever relationships that I thought I had with people in my life, no matter how much I had in common or, um, the same opinion about one thing or the other, I realized that no one was going to get me and understand me and stand by me like the Lord. I knew 100% that no matter how much somebody would nods and agrees with me and says, yeah, I'm on the same page, but they're not on the same page they're not on the same page, that they don't under, actually understand. doesn't matter if we had the same view that NASA is, you know, full of lies. My second ex-husband believes in flat earth. He believes that NASA lies. And he, he came into the truth about a lot of different things, but not the truth, meaning because he doesn't have a relationship with the Lord. He doesn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, but he know he's aware that 
about all the lies. He just doesn't know the truth. He doesn't understand the spiritual aspect. But it was nice as a stepping stone that I had someone in my life that I could at least talk to about fake space. And we didn't go to the moon. And it was, it was comforting, but when I realized that he was still stuck on a lot of different things in the world, I realized that the Lord is like, look, the only one who's really going to understand you, the only one that really can comfort you is me. And so it was a transition. So I went from on that raspberry bush to feeling exposed and feeling like um, I was alone to um, when I started becoming refined by the fire and learning scripture and learning to lean on the Lord for absolutely everything. I went from this lonely berry to imagine being added to a cup of wine. Um, and when I reached that stage of when I stopped listening to man and I stopped trusting in my own understanding of things and, and I let go of my ego and I, um, and I don't know. I decreased myself. There's a lot of people that talk about decreasing themselves, but then they say things like I this and I that. And it's very telling. Like when someone shares a dream, let's, I've watched testimonies where people share dreams and visions and they use phrases like, um, they think that these are good phrases. They use phrases like, use your own discernment. Now think about that for a second. Use your own discernment? They think that they're giving you wise advice and it's like the last thing you want to do is use your own discernment on something, on a situation. Because that's what I was doing at the beginning of my walk when I felt like um, uh, I was on the right path. I was using my own discernment and I was running off ahead of the Lord. I wasn't walking with him because I was following man. I was following after other Christians who said they were born again. And I used my own discernment and, and then I found out I was completely 100% wrong. So you don't use your own discernment. Anyone who says that, you know, be very cautious and walk away from people who speak like that because we don't use our own discernment. Those of us who are born again in Christ, we have his Holy Spirit and we use that Holy Spirit, I don't mean use, but I don't know a proper way to say it. We lean on the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit guides you into all truth. And the Holy Spirit prevents you from being deceived by false lying spirits. But you have to repent. You have to test all spirits. When you're being refined by the fire and you're placed into a situation, you need to ask yourself, why am I thinking this way? Um, it is, is this of Christ? Is it scriptural? Or, or do I need to repent, turn from the false lying spirit that's trying to convince me to lean on my own discernment? Own discernment? No way. You need to lean on Christ 100% of the time. You need to test all spirits by asking yourself, is this of God? Is this scriptural? And there are many scriptures. None of them contradict. They, it backs the truth up 100%. So I hope I planted good seed that 
right now I no longer feel like this lonely berry that's isolated. I feel like I'm in that wine cup, the cup of righteousness, his righteousness, not my own. His holiness, I'm not holy. It's the Holy Spirit within me that I lean on. I hope I plant a good seed and I hope sharing my testimony helps you that it is a journey. I did not walk in perfection. I made mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes at the beginning of my walk. And it doesn't mean that I won't make a mistake today or tomorrow. But His Holy Spirit is faithful. It is faithful. I can testify that it is 100% faithful. That it will guide you when you decrease yourself. When you become a small child. And being open to let your shepherd the Lord Jesus Christ lead the way. I love you and God bless.